Welcome back. In this tutorial we will prevent the ball from continually serving when the game is over. We will also deal with the UI element um, moving out of out of place when the screen size is adjusted. And we will also add a button which resets the game back to its original state so the player can restart the game. So let's get started. The first thing we can do it's fairly quickly is the um, take care of the UI elements uh, going so you see you make the screen size smaller everything else scales but the UI element loses its positioning now the reason for that is because the this is the anchor for this UI element now it's anchored to the center of the screen so when the screen size changes the distance it tries to maintain a constant distance but so so it's getting basically pushed up the top now there are a couple of ways you could sort this out, but a very very quick way is to just drag the anchor up here. So now it'll maintain its position, or at least we could perhaps move the element down a little. And move the anchor down a wee bit. So that should be pretty good now. Okay, so let's do that for the victory message too. So position the element and we'll, oh, if, let's see we want to take the whole thing with us okay so that's that taken care of now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to determine when the game is won so a boolean is an ideal uh, data type for that because it has two states it is a game one false game one true so let's create a boolean here uh, we'll say public bool is game one and we can initialize that to false because when the game starts the game w um, the game will obviously not be one so the next thing we need to do is we need to find a good spot for to or, or we basically need to find out the points at which the game can be won or that state can be changed between true and false or between false and true so the game can be won when the player one score is greater than the score to win so we can set is game one equals true here and likewise if player two score is greater than the score to win is game one equals true here okay so that, that now the program will know if the game has been won or not. So the problem we're going to deal with is the ball continually being reserved after the game is won. So let's go to the ball script and let's see where we should where we should just check that. Um, okay. So in the check if in check if in bounds method we're stopping the ball when it goes out of bounds and repositioning it and then we're determining the serve direction so that's where we need to build in the additional logic to only serve the ball if the game has not been won so only serve ball if game has not been won if so we need to reference game control script for this dot is game won and if the game is won is false the game has not been won we want to determine the serve direction and run the rest of the logic for serving the ball <coughs> now, strictly speaking um, accessing uh, fields in another script like this it's there could potentially be problems with it it's a very quick way of doing things um, by setting all these to public, anything public, it just means that any other script which has an actual reference to this script can access them. Now that can be good for speed, uh, for developing quickly, but it can also be bad because there could be it could interact and maybe change something that's public when it shouldn't if you're not careful with the code. So it's generally considered not a great idea. So you could use things like, uh, you could perhaps use properties or use methods for this sort of thing to kind of control um, how how fields and other scripts are accessed. Now we can look at we'll look at tidying that up later. We won't uh, worry too much about it for now. So 
so now at the, um, the game will stop serving the ball at this point or it should if the game is won boolean has been set to true so let's build that now and just check to make sure let's throw the title here and see if it if it works okay so that's taking care of that particular problem so the next thing we need to look at is resetting the game so to do this we're going to let's add a panel to this canvas now you could add we, we, basically what we want here is we want two buttons eventually we'll put in one for now the first button will restart the game the second button will return to the menu so you can adjust some settings you could just put in the buttons individually um, and switch them on and off but ju just to show you another way of doing this uh, let's just use a panel okay so we can adjust the size later and to this panel we will hmm, let's add a I suppose we can we can look at a, a layout element too so add component and we're going to want a vertical layout group here and let's add a button to that now no something has gone wrong here let's have a look at this again Okay, that's looking better. I don't know why it pushed it outside it there. And we ju we can press Control D to duplicate the button. So we'll call this Restart Game Button. And we're going to need to build the logic now for actually restarting the game. Let's just change the text on that as well. Restart game. Okay, so game control script is the obvious contender for uh, holding the logic for restarting the game. So let's just add that in now. So restarts the game using the current settings. Okay, so public void, we don't want to return anything. Restart game. And we don't think we need to pass anything into it either. So so there's a couple of things we're gonna need to do here. We're gonna need to Reset the score for a start. Reset score. And we'll say, and uh, is game one bull? We'll need to reset that as well. We'll need to um, disable. Uh, or reset the victory message and we'll also and update the score display we'll also need to hide the restart game We'll say the end game options, which will be restart and back to main menu. Hide the end game options panel. And we'll need to serve the ball again. So it can often be useful just to write out the you know the basic instructions you're going to need to do first to uh, help you 
be a little more structured in the way you, you, you write the script. So this is pretty simple. We just got to set player player one score equals zero, player two score equals zero, and is game is game one equals false. Okay. So we're leaving the the text element that that shows the victory message. We can either disable that, or we can just delete the text. Technically, disabling it is probably a better idea. Um, so, let's just do that. So, it's called... The reason for that is, you may want to... It's not a problem here, but if you need to raycast the screen, and you haven't set um, the victory... Let me just show you. If you haven't set this area is not to block raycasts. It won't detect um, any input or any clicks on this side of the screen or on this section of the screen. Now you can set it up differently if you like so, so it will do that but it's probably better just to disable it. So um, victory message text dot see I think it's enabled equals false now we probably also want to just get rid of the string um, victory because it'll be saying player one has one, player two has one. It's probably better just to just reset the string as well, set it to an empty string. Um, oh no, it's it's actually the string that's used to set the text is generated, so we need to actually set the text component to an empty string. Okay, so that will remove the previous vector message. It will hide the object. Now we want to hide the end game option panel, so we, we're going to need to get a reference to that. So we'll get a public game object. We'll call it end game options panel. Okay, and what else will we need? That should that should be enough for that. Um, so end game options panel dot enabled. Maybe a different, maybe a different command. Set active false. Okay, we can just we'll just go ahead and we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, serve the ball again. So we want to say ball script. And maybe we don't have a reference to that either. So let's get a reference to that now. Let's create another area up here called references and call it other. So other scripts and game objects. So public ball script ball script build that. Just comment this out to build. Okay, so let's look at game. So we need to we need to get this panel in here, and we need to get the ball script in here. 
Let's go back and finish this off now. Be ball script dot handle ball serve. And remember we passed zero for random, one for towards player one and two for towards player two. We want to pass zero because we're starting the game again so we're going to randomize the serve. So serve the ball to a random player. Okay, so let's just lose the game now to make sure that's all working okay. Another thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to enable the panel when the game is when the game is lost to provide the option. So let's just check where we're handle end game seems that's uh, pretty much what this method is for. So enable the end game options panel and end game options panel dot set active is true this time. So the game has been won. We want to enable these options for the player and we also know the button isn't actually hooked up to anything so that's we need to do that as well so we click into the button we can see the on click uh, trigger here so we want to add a new function to that now the method or the object and the script is game control that we want to call the, the method on so let's put in game control here and now we pick out game control script and we pick out the method which is restart game so now we just disable this panel and that should that should work from here so let's just pass up the game okay so it, sh it showed the panel let's just have a quick check here so the score is 3-0 the game is 1 is true so let's ha see what happens now we start the game so, okay, it has reset the score. You may notice that it's reset the score there. It didn't show immediately, so we need to we need to call a method to actually set it. So it showed off as zero three, even though it was zero one. The reason is because we haven't actually updated the score. So, update score display, and we'll build that. So let's have another go with this. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you again in the next one.